which brings together not only discussions, deliberations, but also helps us to discuss the research and findings which are coming, which help us to inform how to proceed uh, into the future. I, I believe this is a very good point of intersection and knowledge sharing so that we can benefit from what each institution is producing. This culture stimulates uh, our researchers to think because you can't present what you presented last year. You have to be innovative, you have to be creative the new knowledge. So we greatly appreciate uh, this conference. Research also helps us in identifying new solutions and new problems, like I have seen since we started this morning, we are lamenting. Uh, sometime last year, His Excellency, I had written to him complaining about the challenges basically related to workforce for STI. He wrote back and told me, stop lamenting. He put that, please stop. Actually, he said, please stop mourning. So I have listened, we are mourning. I hope we shall stop mourning and start innovating and taking the ball by the horn. Let me thank the National Council for strategically choosing this particular thing, fostering graduate employability and innovation. I call this strategic um, a very strategic choice because it has come at a time when in the government we are grappling with a huge problem of unemployment. You know, government has spent time putting in place infrastructure and systems to enable people to learn from the universal primary education, which hosted enrollment in primary education. Then universal second education. Then they operate. And we have liberalized education, higher education especially has proliferated. And so we have a lot of skilled people. The challenge is after skill and what you have. Given the package of skills you have, given you have a degree, given you have a diploma, you have a certificate. And if not addressed, it starts to backflow. It starts to backflow. And eventually we begin to see much higher dropout rates in basic education systems. And recently, when I was in one community, I was addressing them about keeping the children in education. One parent rose up and said, but the ones that we train are back with us in the village. Why should I invest in the other children when the ones that I have, I even sold part of my land to Central School, they are back with me in the village. Therefore, government is struggling and grappling and planning to make sure that we address this challenge and you are part of government, hence part of the solution. So as we move in this fourth industrial revolution, first we need to be cognizant that Uganda missed the first industrial revolution. We, we missed the second industrial revolution. We missed the third industrial revolution. Yes, 
we've been using some of the outputs of that industrial pollution. We buy computers, we buy cars, we buy the cameras, we buy all these things and we know how to use them. But the benefits of that happening in your country, that being integrated in your education system, that being integrated in your universities and institutions of higher learning, we missed it. And because of that, we find big gaps and challenges. And some of the things we are warning about here are a result of that. So, now government is positioned to tackle the challenges of these gaps, which have had a cumulative effect. Now that we have addressed certain things, certain basic effects, we must position ourselves to address uh, these issues. As we move deep now into the fourth industrial revolution, the government of Uganda has positioned innovation as one of the key drivers of socioeconomic transformation. And we have laid down Vision 2040. When you study that vision, it anchors science, technology, and innovation as a key driver, which is going to result in the changes in the different sectors in the country. Higher education and innovation are very closely interwoven. Very, very closely interwoven. And uh, it is during this stage of education that skills are consolidated, that knowledge is consolidated, that science, technology, and innovation is properly understood and channeled into uh, developing the economy. So uh, it's very, very important that we work very, very closely because the knowledge base which is provided in the education serves as the foundation for the skills that enable science, technology, and innovation to prosper, to grow, and support the economic development. On the other hand, innovation promotes the culture of creativity, uh, problem solving, and the continuous learning, which are essential for skill development and societal advancement. Our vision 2040 uh, also singles out, among others, human capital development. Human capital development. And of course, there is no bigger player in human capital development than the education sector in the country. The East Africa Community Vision 2050 also emphasizes promotion of learning opportunities and skills through science, technology, and innovation as an avenue to development. This therefore mandates the education sector to ensure implementation of skilling in order to achieve development. I do not know. I'm excited as we meet here, and I think this is the first conference that I'm privileged to be part of. I have been just informally talking to the director and saying, when you do these conferences when we are not there? We are key players, and we would like you to address certain things, because literally science and knowledge and innovation lies idle, it lies idle in our nation as a sleeping giant. If we can only connect, then we will be able to address easily the issues of uh, employability and innovation very, very easily. 
uh, some of the issues that have been hinted on, I will not go so much into them in this address, but some of them I will address in the keynote. However, one issue I wish to talk about, to mention here, is the structures of the universities, which make it very difficult for us to be continuously evolving. Whereas universities are autonomous in their culture under the guidance of the National Council, we seem to have built brick walls around those systems, such that we are not as, um, how do I call it? We are not as flexible. We are not moving with the speed of knowledge generation. We are not moving, our curriculum is not evolving as fast as knowledge generation is happening, as fast as technology is happening. Because we set up these structures and we encase ourselves with them. When I was in West Africa, I was quite impressed. After the first year, Ebola was introduced into the curriculum from basic education level to higher education level, just like that. The first exams they did after opening their schools had Ebola. But here we have very, we have set up very complicated uh, systems which sustain the ivory tower concept. The ivory tower mindset where there's so much knowledge into the university, a lot of it just doesn't have holes to leak into the community surrounding us. I hope this is one of the issues because the employers are changing their needs daily. They cannot wait for you to implement a particular curriculum for five years, then they evaluate. By then, they are on the fourth or fifth level of technology. So by the time you try to, the people you're bringing out, they don't have the knowledge and skills. So we should be producing at this point, by the time somebody is entering the university, we are even forecasting what's going to happen. And we are including that. And the technical team delivery should be modifying content. I hope we no longer have the concept of Yaronax. <laughs> younger people may not understand the concept of Yaronax. Yaronax arose from when lecturers used textbooks, and you are in 1980, but the textbook is 1965, 1970. So there is really no need to update the notes. So year after year, the lecturer writes the notes once, and year after year, they just speak, and with exposure to the environment, the paper is innovative day after day. Ideally, you should not teach two classes, subsequent classes, the same content. Because so much new material has come up. And if those people are going to fit in employment, then they must be having that new uh, information. So it's very, very important that we should also be continuously engaging employers. Here I found that um, in a small nation called Mauritius, their university staff, the teaching staff, must spend time with industry. They have a prescribed time. They must spend time industry or their teaching license is not renewed. That helps the university and higher education instructors to be in touch 
with what the employers need. But as long as academia is separate from industry, or we just go there as visitors, we don't really understand. It is going to be difficult for us to tune skills, to tune attitudes, to tune uh, these people to fit. I've also heard about the lack of other soft skills. I wish to confirm that indeed these skills are missing. The attitude, people think that as long as I have a job, I'm entitled to being paid. I don't have to deliver. That is so common uh, that if I have a job, then I must be paid and paid a good salary. And anybody who demands that I produce results is a tyrant. Still quite few limited to only a few courses where people get um, good uh, internship and mentorship, but also when the job opportunities are few, because that is really the elephant in the room. The job opportunities are few, but I'll talk more about that in the keynote. It is now my singular honor and pleasure to declare the fifth annual Higher Education Conference officially opened. <laughs> the world